My role at CalAMP is VP of uh, Corporate Business Development. Um, we cut across all the business units, and then most of what we're looking at today is how we can engage with enterprises. And we'll talk a little bit about this. This pitch is really tailored towards as the market has moving from single point solutions, particularly in the transportation fleet and industrial IoT space, to multi-use case enterprise solutions. I'm going to give you a view of what we're seeing from the enterprise and what's important to the enterprise. Because my suspicion is everybody in this room, whether you're a device provider, whether you're an applications provider, whether you're a middleware um, cloud-based provider, is going to touch an enterprise at some point in time. It's where a lot of the growth is coming from. So I'm going to walk you through that. I hopefully left enough time at the end for some from quick discussion and dialogue. Um, quick slide on CalAMP. Um, we're just under $400 million in revenue, publicly traded, been around for 30 years. Like a lot of companies in this space, we started off as a component supplier and have migrated into device, cloud, and even applications in certain market segments. Um, you may know us um, as CalAMP, the hardware provider. You may also know of LoJack, um, stolen vehicle recovery. We did an acquisition of LoJack, uh, I would say, almost a year ago. Um, with the target on being able to take the LoJack brand and channels and to drive a consumer telematics solution. Um, aside from that, we really focus in a couple of different areas. Um, we focus in classic vertical markets in IoT, whether they're fleet, transportation, heavy equipment, and industrial IoT. We ship on order about 2.2 million units a year. Probably 90% of those are GPS and cellular based um, in the fleet tracking space. Part of our business that people don't really know about is we run um, a whole solution side of our business with a cloud platform. We have about 600,000 subscribers that are connected end to end. And then on our device management platform, we were one of the first to really come out with a whole device management solution around um, being able to provide device intelligence, upgrading those over the air, controlling managing. It ties all the way back to the point of shipment. And today, our customers that use that solution, we, we do over 7 million units that are on that platform today. So we have a pretty good understanding of what's being touched and used in the market in a number of different areas. So let's talk about the challenges in the enterprise um, with their IoT strategy. Today, there's really three things that have them concerned. Their assets are dispersed, which means they're all over the place, all over the world, all over different segments, all over different parts of their business. There's no coordination between those, so they may have deployed an IoT strategy in one business unit under a certain use case, but that data doesn't necessarily move back into all of the operations of the unit. And in a lot of cases, the solutions are inaccessible between them. And, and I put this under the category of it's the classic evolution of we started with point solutions and proof of concepts to prove the ROI in the business case. We have now moved to we understand what the business case is. The technologies are there to do that. We've demonstrated the ROI. ROI is now about how do we scale. And that's what this presentation is going to talk about is what does the enterprise need to scale. Um, so just in a couple of things, I mean, today data is siloed into a lot of specific areas. You can't get it across the enterprise. Security is one of the highest concerns. Um, and I think you guys have seen some of the threats that have occurred. We've seen some vehicles that have been hacked. We've seen some malware that was driven down to a number of devices prior to the election where they actually got control of some routers um, and were able to disrupt and create you know, the, the DDS, you know, denial of service things. So security is becoming a high thing. And then the lack of, the lack of ability to easily integrate with existing enterprise systems and the ability to scale have really kept the enterprise from going into mass deployments. So this is the typical solution that 90% of the people talk about, which is you've got a cloud that moves a bunch of data to a bunch of applications and you tie to either IoT backend or ERP. The reality is this is the type of discussions that we're starting to get into with the enterprise where the first questions they're asking is, is it cloud enabled? Used to be three years ago, there was a debate whether or not the cloud was secure enough to run an enterprise application or did that application had to be put on an appliance server and run behind the enterprise firewall. I think we've moved past that as an industry. There are certain segments of the enterprise where there is concern about letting that data move into a cloud. But if you look at what Amazon has done, what Microsoft has done, in terms of security, the ability to replicate the solutions, the ability to create virtual environments for the enterprise, those barriers are, are continuing to come down. Fault tolerant. So 
you know, one of the issues in the wireless world is we can't get to five nines of reliability like the wireline guys do, right? So what's good enough? So in the discussions that we have with most of the enterprises today, you got to be at about a 99.5, 99.8% reliability. I mean, that's incredibly difficult in the wireless world given coverages. But what these back-end systems, particularly Amazon and some of these guys have allowed you to do is to create redundancy and fault tolerance on the back end and, and failover so that for all intensive purposes on the back end systems you can get to a pretty high level liability and the question becomes how do you handle that on the device side if, if a, if a three nines, four nines requirement is required from the device side where is that handled? Do you do dual mode? Do you do failover on the back end side and on the device side? Scalable, we, we have this discussion with enterprises every day and, it, and it's scalable from the standpoint of not just the number of subs and how broad based you can get to but how do I scale across different regions of the world and different regions of the US and how do I scale on different technologies and how do I get scale with different carriers and so what you're running into now is it's no longer a single device or a single solution that can support the enterprise it has to be able to move horizontally and it has to be able to move geographically in terms of the types of things it can support This right here, in, in the IT department, outside of cloud connectivity, this is the number one concern for the IT department is security. Um, in the older technologies, with a lot of proprietary protocols, it wasn't such an issue as you move to LTE and IP networks where everything is on an IP backbone. And the ability to have to run different levels of security protocols in the device, either because it's not scaled for that level of protocol or because you don't want to provide that much bandwidth, put some challenges on the industry in terms of how security needs to be handled. You're seeing some interesting things being done in the connected vehicle space with some technologies called blockchain and some other ones that are trying to coordinate the whole ecosystem. But as a device manufacturer, an application provider, or as a cloud management platform, end-to-end -end security is now becoming the number one concern on the enterprise in terms of how they deploy. Device intelligence, we talk about this a lot, you know, do you use a distributed intelligent network where the device handles most of its decision logic? Do you move all the data back to the enterprise so the enterprise can do it? Do you throttle between the use cases? This is where I think a lot of the creativity comes in the device side because it allows you the ability to go off and create devices that can be dynamically tuned for the use case or the environment and can be changed once they're deployed depending upon the type of data that's collected. But device intelligence, and, and this goes to a lot of the types of de decisions you made, is where in that ROI and in that use case, where do you want that decision to reside and how much data impact and resource impact does it have to the rest of the architecture. Access management, some people call this um, uh, proxy management, permissions, but basically it's the rules that allow people to have access to information or systems to have access to information. So do you allow your admin to have total control over your deployed network and only the operations department have certain access? Do you allow the maintenance and technicians to have certain logins and control what they can and can't do from the device standpoint when they're the field touching the device for security standpoints? But this is an area that's become more sophisticated and, and it's more than just kind of the concept of multi-tent and of user admin and, and, and you know, who can log into the system. It's about who has access to the device and under what scenario do they have access to the device. And a lot of this is being driven from, once again, the security aspect is once a device is deployed, they want to control, the IT department wants to control who can touch the code, where is it done, what can be done locally versus what can be done remote. Uh, the last couple pieces, and, and you know this is classic in the industry, is both the network subscription management, the device management, are they separate platforms, are they common platforms? And then the bigger piece is really about integration. And this is integration into the enterprise backends. When information gets sent where, how often does it go, can you port it to multiple places, can you control where it goes to, can you allow the customer to see certain information, and then there's a back channel to the enterprise that it pulls other information. Um, but we're seeing all of these, particularly in applications where the end user only subscribes for a certain class of service, but the enterprise wants a lot of, let's say, vehicle maintenance, fault codes, a lot of stuff to build back into their operations, into their loyalty programs. We're seeing that type of information be segmented off from what the user or the consumer could see. 
So this chart is an eyesore. I can tell you from personal experience that, that we have this discussion at some level with the enterprise because typically there are three or four interested parties in the dialogue. It goes from the IT department who has typically has veto authority. They may not make the decision on the device and platform, but they have typically have veto authority if it doesn't meet the requirements inside of the IT department. It comes from the operational guys that have a set of information that they want to collect so that they can mature their operation and how they manage it in the field. It comes from the device project management who has a specific use case that they want to develop and may want information out of the device so that they can use it to, to build features and enhancement for next generation solutions. And it comes from the finance and accounting departments that want to be able to manage and control the expenses on the network operation side. So when we look at this diagram, we tend to break things into three components. Um, you have the middleware platform as a service solution, which allows a whole lot of things to be brought in and out of the ecosystem. You have the applications that are built on top. And a lot of time, these applications may be independent of the radio technology that's down below. So you want the application to run seamlessly whether it's in the US running on a 2G legacy network or an LTE Cat1, or you want it to be able to run in Europe on a 3G network. So a lot of those issues in terms of that level of abstraction and how those controls are put in place are a lot of times driven down to a lower level. But typically, the application in the newer architectures today and what the enterprise is expecting is pretty much APIs. So whether they're REST APIs or they're MQQT, Whatever that is, they want that application to be able to move seamlessly into different, into different verticals, different use cases, and different regions without having to go and redesign that application for specific idiosyncrasies around the network, around the device. Inside of that platform, um, there's a whole host of things that are now becoming a requirement. And, and they're becoming a requirement in what I can take, what I would call a single pane view. So what they don't want to do is they don't want to have a platform that does device management of the device go into another whole platform and do network services and then go into another platform and set up the rules for how the decision logic is done. They want to be able to have a single view drop between panes and being able to control that from one administration view. In our industry, that's very difficult because we have typically built these solutions as kind of multiple companies. What I think we're seeing now, particularly at the device level and the application level, is this drive to common APIs in such that applicant frameworks move data. They don't really know what the data is and that those APIs go off to the services that want to use them. And that allows for the application to pull those services and to be able to show that in a single pane or single chair or split screen, but fundamentally they get access to all of that information without having to move between different systems. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, analytics. Uh, I would say outside of just the standard use cases that are built for operational efficiency, almost every enterprise today is trying to figure out how they can pull off data for data analytics. They don't necessarily know what the data needs to be. They don't necessarily know what it's going to show them. But the history of the space has been that most of these um, IoT deployments were kind of event driven to optimize the data stream and to drive the cost of the device down. Unfortunately for the enterprise, the amount of data that's been collected over the past decade or so isn't efficient enough or deep enough for them to really see at a macro level what's going on with their deployments. So we're getting a lot of push from the enterprise today to come back in and say we want the ability to turn on a larger data stream. We may only want that data stream on for a period of time, whether it's through the early deployment or whether it's through peak seasons or whether they want to go in and test their, their operation lifecycle management. But they want the ability to capture a lot of data, be able to archive that back, and be able to do post-processing on it. That, I think, is a new requirement in this industry because typically in the devices that we developed, we didn't really open them up for full data solutions. A little bit about the microservices. Um, I mean, you guys, you guys have come from this world where multiple carrier connections, so the devices, there, is, there isn't necessarily a one device that fits all. And, and, and we talked about this some of the earlier thing where 
depending upon the deployments and the cost for the solution, there are multiple technology solutions that the enterprise may need to adopt for the same use case. In North America, it may be one. In Europe, it may be another. I will tell you that in a lot of our discussions with the enterprises, they don't understand technology. So you can have a conversation around LTE CAT1. You can talk about CATM, and you can talk about narrowband. And quite frankly, at a technology level, they don't understand. What they do understand is, how long will that deployment be in the field? How often do I have to service it? What's its useful life? What are the economics of the device price over time? And how many different versions of that device do I have to have to solve the same use case? And so in our dialogue with a lot of the enterprises, a lot of the time we're having to bring the carrier in and have to talk through the carrier story. We believe that that, as we get to the end of this year, will get simpler because as M1, Cat1 M1 rolls out, we'll start to see real deployments that we can relate back to. But today, the, the enterprise just doesn't, in most cases, just doesn't understand the technology transition. It's new to them and foreign to them. Right, so this is really what the enterprise is interested in, is what's the value of the data we're collecting? In, in that standpoint, what can I do with it? What systems can see it? How can I post-process it? How long can I save it? How can I change the reporting of the device so that I can throttle the types of data? But fundamentally, how, how can I take that data and feed it back into all of my operation systems? Operation in terms of how the field team works and manages the device. Operation in terms of how do I improve the efficiency of my business automation. We talked about this earlier. How do I feed it back into my development organization such that I can figure out what the right next parameters are from a use case perspective and create value around it. But fundamentally, the enterprise doesn't know this yet. This is new to them. They, they get it in the corporate IT world where you have tons of records and information around patients and, and vehicle maintenance and things where it's all done by systems that are in one building or another. But when you start to deploy assets in the field, this is new to them. They're still learning this. So I'm going to take you through a couple of use cases um, that we've done in the last, la last couple of years. One of them is a classic fleet management use case, which started as tracking the vehicle in, in Latin America and just geofencing when it got to its delivery point and when it left into its um, new position. So nothing more than basic tracking. In the last couple of years, it moved to tracking of the vehicle plus the cargo. So when was the cargo loaded? Was the cargo moved? What's the cargo associated with the vehicle? And so you could start to associate things around the vehicle with the vehicle itself. It then moved to diagnostics on the vehicle itself, fuel level. Um, how long was it driven? How long did it sit idle? What's the, the battery level? Um, how is the driver driving and performing? And, and most recently, it's moved into what we call crash or um, damage notification, where if the vehicle is, the fleet vehicle is in an accident, all of the specifics around that time date um, geoforce, location, who was driving can all be assumed now so that you can actually put a value on what happened. And so we've seen what was a simple use case move into very complex use cases. And it, in reality, it's still all driven by the device inside of the vehicle and or the devices around it. And we're going to see that solution as we move particularly into some of these low power wireless solutions become far more prevalent where the vehicle becomes the hub of the information and the, and the cargo, the containers, the trailers, the, the environment around it becomes part of its ecosystem. This last one, um, I think most people know we, we did a deal with Caterpillar a couple years ago. CAT's probably in the heavy equipment OEM is on the forefront of trying to, to drive a high level of vehicle telematics inside of their solutions. Um, and it's gone to the point now where it's moved from just being able to transmit information around it. Do they have access to all of the bus inside of the equipment now? So they can determine everything. They, fuel levels, oil levels, when was the oil pump changed? When was the tire rotated? What's the tire pressure system? And so what Caterpillar has done is not only to control the environment and understand who's using it, but they have fed all of that information back into their operations teams and used it to generate their next generation requirements of engines. Used it to put and understand what their dealers are doing in terms of putting 
parts on the uh, repairs on that may not be from an OEM. So they get a feel for all of that. But once again, they, they now have in almost all of their new upcoming equipment, they have a fully integrated vehicle bus that allows for them to take all that information and they're actively driving it back into side of their operations team. CAT uses kind of a two technology solution. They use cellular and they use satellite for in and out of coverage, um, like a lot of people do. But fundamentally, um, in terms of trying to get a fully integrated data collection system inside of the heavy equipment, they've done a really good job of moving forward.